Hello everyone, my name is Michael Gibson. I'm just talking about why I go to church. This is part 28. I labeled this one, the weapons. And the reason why I'm calling it the weapons because the Bible, it talks about that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And it said that every tongue that rises up against you it will condemn and show to be in the wrong. So it's very important for you to recognize that there will be weapons and those weapons will be formed. Those weapons will be used. It's just that the weapons won't prosper. Again, weapons will be formed. Weapons will be used, but the weapons will not prosper. I think a lot of times people get confused when they start believing in God, start serving God and start to move forward into things that God calls them, that it's not smooth sailing. That's because that is a misinterpretation of the scripture because he's letting you know that people are gonna start forming weapons. People actually will start using their mouth as a weapon because it says that um, every tongue that rises up against you, that means that the tongue is, they're actually talking. That means they're actually gonna talk about you because you're doing something for God. And I used to think that, and, and I still think it, but the devil does attack you because of who you are. But in addition to attacking you because who you are, it's really about what you're doing. The devil really begins to attack you because of what you're doing. When you're not doing anything, he's not making, you're not making any waves, you're not ruffling any feathers. He may not ever, ever mess with you. Like he's aware of you because he can see or, or maybe he can sense the glory, but it's when you begin to put your hand to the plow. It's when you actually begin to till the ground. It's, it's when you actually begin to plant your garden that's when the attacks really, really, really begin to come. So it's very important. I find it very vital. I find it critical to recognize that when you start to move on the things that God placed in your heart, there are going to be weapons that will be formed. Those weapons will be formed. Those weapons will be used. Those weapons will be fired. Those weapons may even hit you. Those weapons may even leave an indelible mark. They may even scar you, but they will not defeat you. The weapons may hit you. They may scar you, but they will not defeat you. So I go to church because I'm beginning to learn that, wow, there are really weapons. There are There is really opposition. So you give your heart to God and it's like, now what? What do I do? You give the heart to God and next thing you know, things start going crazy. Things start getting haywire. It's like, wow, when I wasn't serving God, when I wasn't believing God, none of these things were happening to me. Now I'm trying to do the right thing. I'm trying to get my life together. I am trying, you know, to, to stay on, on a sure footing. And now temptation comes. Now confusion comes. Now distraction comes. So again, a weapon, one of Satan's tricks, is distraction. That's one of his greatest tricks is mix direction. One of his greatest tricks is confusion. So I go to church because one of the weapons, or one of the things that God says is to be aware of the enemy's devices. So when I get into the word of God, when I begin to study for myself, I am now beginning to learn what some of those devices are. Now I'm beginning to arm myself what ways to defeat those devices. So again, I go to church because of the weapons, because the weapons are gonna be formed. The weapons are gonna be used against me. They just won't defeat me. And I go to church so that I can be armed to protect myself against those weapons so that I can be prepared for battle. So in Ephesians, it says you wrestle not against flesh and blood. Too many of us are trying to fight and the natural. And what is going on is a supernatural war. So you 
are not recognizing that some of the issues that, that, that has come up upon you is because of you have actually taken action. You actually have started to move towards the person that God has called you to be. And because of your movement, these weapons are now being attacked or launched rather an attack is actually being put against you so it talks about the fiery darts what do you think darts are that's a weapon of war that means that an attack is coming a thought is coming to stop you from from keeping doing what god has called you to do so i want you to be encouraged i want you to stay encouraged to keep doing the thing that god has called you to do and that opposition may be coming opposition may be trying to stop you that doesn't mean that you should stop doing what god has called you to do because opposition does not mean that you're not on the right track. Opposition does not mean that you're not on the right track. Opposition actually means that you started to do something, to call someone to resist against you. And sometimes opposition comes just to see what's in the inside of you, to see if you really want it bad enough. Because some people don't want these things bad enough. They, they wanna get into something, but they don't want, they, they don't want it that bad. They don't want it that bad that they're willing to, you know, miss a meal for it. They don't want it that bad that, you know, I might have to stay up late for it. They don't want it that bad because it might cost me something. So it's very important to know what you're fighting and what you're fighting for and why you're fighting. And it's very important to know who's fighting with you. It says that if God be for you, who can stand against you? He didn't say that you would never get in any battles. He never said that. He never said that you would not get in any battles. He just said, if God be for you, who can be against you? He said that if I am for you, who can be against you? So you are going to face opposition. You are going to face battles. You are going to have headaches. You are going to have people throwing shade because he said every tongue that rises up against you. He will condemn them and show to be in the wrong. Your problem is you thought that when I started to put my hand to the plow, that no one would ever say anything negative against me, that no one would ever get in my business. Nah, you got it twisted. It's because you're moving, people are in your business. It's because you're grinding, people are in your business. It's because you are actually accomplishing the things that God has called you to accomplish, that people are in your business. It's when you start moving, it's when you start accomplishing, that's when the adversary comes with his nonsense talking about, nah, you on the wrong track. That's when the adversary gives you a flat tire. That's when the adversary calls your, your heating to go up. That's when the adversary sends all the distractions to keep you from moving forward. So I want you to recognize that in a fight, there's two ways to fight. There's a defensive, a defensive fight, and then there is an offensive fight. So said the weapons. So the devil has weapons, but you have a greater weapon. You have a greater weapon. So when you read in Ephesians, it talks about the sword. So you got to pick up the sword. The sword is the word. And then what good is a sword if you never swing it? So I go to church because I need to learn my offensive weapons. Because I can't fight a defensive fight any longer. I am no longer going to sit back and let the enemy keep attacking me. I'm no longer going to let the enemy keep gaining ground in my life. You got to stop allowing the, the enemy to advance on you. He's making advances on you and he's taking territory from you. And all he is doing is taking things that belong to you. You got to start swinging and taking back and taking back what is your legal right? What is your birthright? What is your birthright? When I say your birthright, I'm not talking about your natural birthright. I'm talking about your kingly birthright, your spiritual birthright, because you've been adopted into the kingdom of God's dear son. So if you're not adopted into the kingdom of God's dear son, this message not, may not be for you, but I've been adopted into the kingdom of God's dear son, and I'm not going to let the devil take any more stuff from me. I'm tired of the locust and the canker worm. I'm done with them. Y'all going to come, but guess what? I'm arming myself with the word. I'm learning how to to defeat you. I'm fighting back. I'm moving forward. I'm not turning back. I put my hand on the plow and I'm not turning back. I heard a message today when it says that when you take your hand off the plow, that you're unfit for the kingdom. So guess what? When you put your hand on the plow, it doesn't mean that your hand's not going to work, hurt. 
It doesn't mean that you're not going to get sweaty. When you put your hand on the plow, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get dehydrated. It just means that you got to put the work in. I'm ready to put the work in. Are you ready to put the work in? Are you ready to put the work in? The power lies in the consistency. The power lies in the consistency. Some people are impotent because they won't stay consistent. You're impotent, meaning you have no power because you are not consistent enough to gain power. How can you go to the gym and get on the treadmill once a month and think you can run a mile? It ain't going to happen. You're going to cramp up. Your body's going to get sore. You're going to be out of breath. You build up stamina by repeated effort. You build stamina by repeated effort, by doing things over and over and over and over again. And you get more stamina when you push past the barriers. The things that used to hinder you will not hinder you any longer when you keep doing it, when you become regimented, when you become consistent. So I'm trying to get more regimented. I'm trying to get more consistent in the things of God because I am moving towards my purpose. I'm moving towards my destiny. So I'm ready for the opposition. I just know that it won't work. I'm ready for the shade because I know that the light of God will shine brighter. I'm ready for people to try to humble me because I've already humbled myself. So it says when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he will exalt you and do time. I'm not looking for man to exalt me. I'm looking for my savior to exalt me. I'm looking for him to be satisfied in the things that I do. I'm just, I'm just tired of, I'm just tired of sitting back. So I'm using my weapon, which is the sword of the word. I'm armoring myself. So every day I know that I'm in a war. Every day I know there is a battle. But every day I know that greater is, is in me than he that is in the world, in the world. I know that when I put on all the weapons of my warfare, when I put on all the weapons, I put on the helmet, I shod my feet, I gird my loin, put on my breastplate, I grab my shield, but I never put anything on my back because God has my back. So I just want you to go to church so that you can learn about the weapons, so that you can learn how to fight offensively and get off the defense. If this blessed you, I hope you share it, but I go to church because of the weapons. I'm learning to recognize that the weapon I have is better and greater than any weapon that the opposition has. The weapon that I have is bitter, is bigger, greater, stronger than any weapon that the opposition may have. Now you may ask, how do I have such confidence in the weapons that I have? Because the Bible said there wasn't anything made that was not made by him. Satan is a created being. He is created by God. He is created by God. So that means there is nothing that Satan can create that God cannot defeat. Amen, Brian. Amen. That's, that's, that's a beautiful thing to me, man. That's a, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I'm really glad to hear that. There is nothing that Satan can create that God cannot defeat. On God's worst day, he is smarter than Satan on his best day. Satan may be whooping some of you, but he ain't whipping God. He's not whipping God. His, de his defeat is already destined. His demise is already destined. And all he's trying to do is say that misery loves company. And he's trying to get you to go with him. Don't go with him. Fight. Fight, fight, fight. Use your weapon. That is the word of God. There is no greater weapon on this planet than your word. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And when you use his words as your word, 
you will not be defeated. Have a great evening, great afternoon, great day, whatever time of day it is, because I'm a little later than normal. Be blessed. Thank you for listening.